Okay, Kent, uh, let's talk about uh, parent materials. We've got some good examples uh, right in the view here, but uh, what kinds of parent materials are there? Well, let's first look at how they're classified and broken down. The first level of the classification is, is two groups. We have parent materials that form in place, and then the other tr parent materials are been transported by some mechanism. Okay. Well, tell us about the ones that are formed in place. Those are referred to as sedentary. We are sedentary. We're not moving right now. So there's two classes within the sedentary. There's what we call residual. Those are mineral parent materials that just develop in place uh, in environments that are fairly flat, very stable, have not been glaciated or, or moved about in any way. So residual parent materials develop on bedrock and the soil process is just whether the bedrock and the profile develops right on the rock. The other one is called cumulose and those are our organic parent materials that develop in wetland environments where organic matter grows around the sides of the ponds and slowly fills them in and it's accumulating in place so it's sedentary as well, it's not moving anywhere. Okay. So what about the second category, the ones that are in uh, transported materials? Well there's four methods of transport, there's gravity, there's wind, there's water and there's ice. So I think uh, in this environment here, it's, it would be good for us to start with uh, gravity as a mechanism. Well, there's a gravity example behind us. We have a mountain face and freeze-thaw action fractures the rock up on the mountainside. And that rock then releases usually in the spring and the summer. And it falls under the influence of gravity and forms a landform called a colluvial talus slope or a talus slope. Okay, what about uh, water then? Well, water, we turn that as fluvial parent materials. So we would have landforms such as a, a delta, we would have alluvial fans, we have floodplains. Those are the three broad landform groups that are composed of fluvial parent materials which developed after glaciers had left this particular area. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think there's one more mechanism at least, uh, wind. That's correct. We have wind, and the parent material name is aeolian or eolian. And there's three particle sizes that are blown by the wind. There is sand, which produce a landform called sand dunes. We have loose deposits or lus. Uh, that's wind-blown silt. And quite often, after deglaciation, we see uh, silt capping on our landscapes. And the other one, of course, is volcanic ash. And we can often see volcanic ash layers deposited in sequences of other parent materials. Mm -hmm. You've talked about, uh, as mechanisms of transport, you've talked about gravity, you've talked about water, you've talked about wind. Is there anything missing? Oh yeah, the biggest one in this project, and that is ice. Uh, okay. So we have four uh, ice uh, related parent materials and they all begin with the term glacial. So glacial uh, marine, glacial fluvial, glacial lacustrine, glacial till. Those parent materials were somehow involved with direct ice deposit or in the vicinity of ice. So the meltwaters or whatever was contributed by ice. Mm -hmm. Okay Kent, uh, tell us a little bit more about these glacial materials and glacial processes. Well, let's start with glacial marine, which we will not see in this environment. It's found on the coast. It developed when the glaciers were out to the, the ocean edge and the weight of the ice actually depressed the landscape. When the glaciers melted, sea levels rose because that glacial meltwater had to go somewhere. So the ocean level rose and at that time, clays were uh, washed out into the ocean environment. They settled on the seafloor. But what happened then over time is the seafloor rose up by the process known as isostatic rebound. It just bounced back up because the weight was gone. So that material is now above sea level. So that's our glacial marine deposits. Mm -hmm. Then we have glacial lacustrine, which is in a glacial lake where we had fine silts and clays washed into a lake uh, environment. In the summertime, the silts are bigger particles, larger particles, they would settle to the bottom. In the winter, the lakes would freeze over and the clays that are suspended during the summertime would settle, forming these layers called varves. So these are fine textured materials, highly erodible in uh, certain instances. Then we have glacial till, and there's two kinds of till. There's ablation till that forms on the ice. It also gets trapped within the ice. So that's being transported by the ice as it's moving along. But also under the ice, it's being, everything's being ground up. So that's our basal till. The basal till tends to be finer textured because of the weight of the ice, it's more compact. And then when the glacier melts, the ablation till just drops onto the basal till. So quite often we find these two layers, ablation till over basal till. And the last one is glacial fluvial, which 
as the glacial meltwaters come off the ice and they work through existing deposits of glacial till, other sediments, and they rework them. And the glacial fluvial meltwaters will carry the silts and clays into the lake environment where the silts and clays settle and leaving behind the gravel and sandy deposits in landforms such as outwash terraces and deltas and that kind of thing.